Hello and once again welcome to Let's Explore, my name is Steve. Right then, today it's time for part two of this video that was only supposed to be a part one, but it's actually worked out much better doing it that way, I'm glad I've done it this way now. Anyway, of course in part one we went to look at the Raper and Fenton colliery and the Califat colliery, of course the Raper and Fenton being the red dot there and the Califat being the orange dot. It's time to get me and that great big spot on my forehead, which looks like Barden Hill, over to where <laughs> the blue dot is, because that is of course New Land nature reserve which used to be Lount Colliery and then we're going to do a revisit where the purple dot is of Newbold Tunnel. Now of course Newbold Tunnel opened in 1833 and it stayed open until 1872 but then when the new Lount Colliery come along, uh, not the new Lount Colliery, the Lount Colliery when they came along they actually converted the line so steam locomotives could run through that famous Robert Stevenson Tunnel because back in the day it was only a tramway. Right then Right then, so here we are, New Lount Nature Reserve. And of course, from the years 1924 up until I think around about 1968, not too sure on when it closed, I think it was 68, this was of course home of a Lount Colliery. And of course, it's one of the later collieries in the area. And of course, this area of North West Leicestershire was intensively um, mined for the best part of 800 to 1,000 years very long time but um, apparently this was built this colliery because it was like a bit of a mop-up operation of uh, the coal they didn't extract before anyway without any further ado let's go and search the undergrowth and see if we can indeed find any clues to any sign of a colliery I think you might be surprised what we find here but um, just look at this, absolutely beautiful. And I'm making the most of the sunshine because I'm led to believe that from tomorrow onwards, from Saturday, the weather's gonna be poor. But hopefully not too bad because I've actually got another video planned for Sunday. Anyway, fingers crossed we'll get to make it because I'm actually looking forward to making that as well. Anyway, but until then, let's go and look at this place. And just look at that. We have got a new bold brick. Now, it says Bold Co Limited. It wasn't Duncan Goodhue's brick, <laughs> brick making company, I can assure you. Of course, just here, where the rest of the brick once was, that would have said New Bold. Now, of course, this colliery at Lount, I think there was a brickworks here as well. I'm not certain on that. Uh, there was definitely one in New Bold, as far as I know. Well, there must be, because we've got it here, haven't we? New Bold. So, yeah, very interesting. Lovely. Absolutely love coming across those. Right, it's Friday afternoon, it's the weekend, and we're doing our favourite thing, Indy Andy Jones in it. I mean, Indiana Jones. I keep, I've got that used to saying Indy Andy Jones. <laughs> I, I say that instead now, but anyway, here we go, through the undergrowth. And of course, in terms of buildings that are still standing, there's none of that up here no more. But you get things like this lying about. And you know, I love coming across stuff like this. That looks like some sort of concrete stanchion point, don't it? That's had steelwork on the top possibly by the looks of it but if we go through here oh you can't see me now but i'm having to bend down in fact i'm crawling now got some other great pieces of concrete sticking up here it's great to see i mean a lot of people will think what the hell is he doing if they're walking the dog but you know i love coming across stuff like this and it's a great reminder of what happened in our in our past isn't it you know yeah this is a nature reserve now of course but uh oh Hello chaps, sorry about that. <laughs> I'd get the right one if someone did that to me in my house, wouldn't I? But uh, yeah, so what this was here, I'm not sure. In fact, this area that I'm actually exploring in right now, I think there actually used to be some baths here for the miners. And as far as I know, it was one of the first pits to introduce that kind of thing for its workers, as far as I know. Don't quote me on that. But yeah, very interesting. And I can see something else through the undergrowth over there. Let's go and have a look. Right, so I've been up here a lot of times before, walking Nev and coming for a run up here and what have you. But this is one area I've never actually been in. I'm only over here today because we're making this video. So I'm finding all sorts of knockdown structures here. Um, and it's great, you know, when, you, when you're doing this kind of thing, you can kind of draw your own landscape in your mind. You know, I'm imagining what these buildings look like now. It's a bit like when you're reading a book and there's no pictures, but at least we have got a bit of a picture, haven't we? You know, but um, yeah, very interesting. And this bit's actually fenced off here and we can see just over there, some more concrete. Could it possibly be a shaft? I really don't know, but yeah, some more brickwork here. Of course, all of it built from the mid uh, 1920s. But yeah, let's go over there, see what's in there. 
proper Indiana Jones in today. We love it. Right then, so this is very interesting. So of course, we've just climbed over that fence. We've got metal work here. That's very interesting, isn't it? That is very interesting because what we've got here, we've got this here, look. Look at that. That's a big bolt, isn't it? Very big. Now I'm wondering if this is indeed an old shaft and there was a headstock here. Quite possibly. Um, I mean, I really don't know, but if you look here, if you look at this fence line that goes there, across there, then down here, then back again. Now, usually when these nature reserves, well, when these former collieries become nature reserves, they'll often fence the old shafts off like they've done here. Now, I'm not saying this is definitely a shaft, because it might not be, but it could well be one. In fact, what we've got here, this is interesting, look. Wow, look at this, right near the car park, as you can see over there. So this is, look at this, I've never noticed this before. Right, let's get a closer look. Do you know what, this is very interesting, and you can pretty much guarantee, I'd imagine, if I share this on the local Colville History Group on Facebook, there'll be somebody that worked at this colliery who will hopefully watch this and tell me what this area is. I mean, just look at this. Is it all part of the old headstock? One of the headstocks, one of the shafts? I don't know, but I'd love to come across this old, this old metal work. In fact, just give you another look at that, just in case you worked here. In fact, my own granddad worked here at some point, maybe in the 60s before it closed, because I know he then went on to work at Snibston on Ashby Road. But uh, what's that through there? Did you see that down there? I'm not going in because I'm going to end up cutting myself right up, but yeah, fascinating. Potentially a shaft here, that's what I'm saying, but please let me know if you worked here or you know a lot about this site. Hey up then, so this has just got really interesting for me. So just in there, look, you see that bit of a mound in there? That's where I've just been showing you what I think is potentially a mining shaft might be wrong. But then, just the other side of the fence, I actually noticed it when I was recording in there. You've got this clearing here, look. Now this is more or less a perfect circle, and I'm sure there's brickwork around it, but I'll have a closer look in a sec. But to me, now I'm gonna show you very shortly in the video, through there, there's some old rail lines that I think are standard gauge, uh, four foot, eight and a half inches wide. Well, I'll measure them, because I've got a tape measure with me. So we'll have a look. But this could well be, a turntable for the trains. Very interesting that, might not be. I haven't got a clue. Let's have a look at it. Right then, so what we've got here is a lot of broken up brickwork. So we've got a brick here, we can see that. There's a brick there. There is a bit of a, you're gonna struggle seeing it on camera. You've got brickwork in here. This basically goes around in a circle. More bricks here. So this is very interesting. It could well be a turntable. Um, it could be some sort of uh, reservoir um, built within a structure. I'm not sure, to be honest with you. I ain't got a Scooby-Doo. Pile of bricks there. But, you see, here you go again. Now, this is a circular structure, whatever it is. I'm convinced it is. I might be wrong. Uh, maybe, but yeah, what's that there? Is that a shotgun cartridge? Yeah, it is. Best watch what I'm doing then, aren't I? So for me, this does look like some sort of turntable. It's definitely something round and circular, wouldn't you say? Definitely. Yeah, ah, now just here, what's this? Now just look at that lot. Yeah, very interesting as to what this function does. But I do know, like I say, over there, you've got rails. So we'll have a look at those shortly. Fascinating. Right, so I'll actually show you the rails very shortly, but uh, just a stone's throw from there, a very short stone's throw. You've got this really old brickwork, so of course, once upon a time, there was indeed another structure here, but again, you've got this steel, looks like a, an RSJ or something like that, don't it? Uh, and actually on the other, in fact, what's that there? Is that a railway sleeper? Yeah, this is an old railway sleeper by the looks of it. Fascinating, absolutely fascinating. Why it's there, I don't know. Just through there, look, don't know if you can see that. Actual railway lines there, railway track, but another one here, look. Beautiful, so 
you've got some brickwork down here that I've just shown you. And long here, look. Oh, it's like the gift that keeps giving this place, isn't it? All buried in the undergrowth, of course. Now, if my mate Indy Andy Jones were here, he'd be like Sherlock now. He'd know what was going on here. I'm the spawn of Wessex. Hello, mate, if you're watching as well. Yeah, you've got another one of these here, look. Same. It's just over there, so absolutely fascinating. And it's a shame these buildings still ain't here intact, isn't it? But uh, they're not, so we have to do a bit of a detective job on it. I'm no good as a super sleuth. You might say that I'm a super sloth, to be honest. But uh, anyway, that's one for another video, I think. Right, let's show you these rails. Right then, so this is by far, in my opinion, the best feature up at New Lount Nature Reserve, or the former Lount Colliery. That's these train tracks here. They're still left in place now of course this then is the the yard where the uh, trucks and that were stored and you know i imagine loaded up around here somewhere as well with the coal but these do look to be standard gauge rails and i think you know standard gauge i think that was what uh, george stevenson come up with wasn't it the standard gauge which was four inches eight and a half inches wide but to find that out you've got to measure it now for some reason i always carry around with me a tape measure why i don't know but it's a good job I've got one today. Let's have a look. Right, let's see if I was right then. <laughs> How many people carry a tape measure about with them, eh? Yep, four foot, eight and a half inches. Thank you, Mr. Stevenson. <laughs> So this area of Lount Colliery is quite interesting. Now we've just been over there looking at the standard gauge uh, railway lines, haven't we? And just here, look, beneath my feet, got very narrow gauge rails here as well. But just over here, if you look at this, we've got another standard gauge line here. And this is very interesting as well, because the actual rails up turn here, look. So this is like a stopping point here, I'd imagine. Um, I imagine that's a natural feature there. I don't think that I'd have, unless it happened when they uh, took the uh, actual rails up. I'm not sure, I don't think so. Maybe this was a stopping point here. But it's quite interesting because whereas you've got the standard gauge here, and like I say, next to them, maybe supplementing them, is the narrow gauge. So I imagine that these might have actually been worked. Now they either had a very small steam engine up here as well, which I doubt, or maybe pit ponies still in use in the 1920s up to 60. I'm not sure. Or men used to actually push small trucks for whatever reason, for whatever purpose. Not sure. So that's very interesting, isn't it? Right, so further up, we've got more of these narrow gauge rails here, look. Absolutely fantastic. This one, <laughs> that goes, we'll follow that round in a minute. I have been up here before and looked at these, but this one down here, of course, goes off into this undergrowth, so I don't know what's over here. Is there much to look at over here? I've never actually looked before. What's down here then? Not an awful lot down there, apart from some lovely bluebells. Yeah, just look at those bluebells over there, look. Stunning, and in fact, I've just spotted just there what looks like a manhole. We'll look at that in a minute, but let's see where this narrow gauge goes first. Right then, so I think this is a beautiful little feature. So just look at this. Now what you've got there, that is your standard gauge railway line there. This is the yard of Lount Colliery. Then of course, cutting across it here, is this narrow gauge line. Now, 
like I said earlier, whether this was served by horses or they had a steam locomotive in the yard, a very small one at that, judging by the width of this, then yeah, I'm not sure, but how beautiful is this? I mean, just look at this. Beautiful groove there in the standard gauge railway line to accommodate for the truck or train or whatever was coming through here. There definitely would have been trucks of some sort coming through here anyway, whether they were horse drawn or small steam locomotive drawn. But ain't that lovely? Absolutely love coming across stuff like that, don't we? And like I say, this is another fantastic place to come for a walk. And I do encourage you to come up here if you've never been before. Right, let's go over that fence there and see what that small brick structure was. I'm guessing it's some sort of drainage system because you can bet there's a water course down there somewhere. Let's have a nose there. Yeah, I think I was right. So I've just climbed over that fence. It looks like we've got, yeah, that is indeed a manhole. I'd say that's a storm drain. So let's see if I'm right or not. I think that's what it is anyway. Step irons. Yeah, that's a storm drain. 100% and you know, of course, down there in that direction, there will be a water course there. You know, we're going downhill. Water finds its level, don't it, at the bottom of valleys. So you imagine there'd be some sort of head wall down there. But yeah, look at that. So on the right there, you've got a, a six inch diameter inlet. You've got a nine inch diameter inlet there. And at the back here, another six inch. And then you've got a main channel there which looks like 300 millimetre diameter. Just look at that lovely brickwork that's created that arch there, look. Beautiful, but yeah, this would have been some sort of surface water drainage system, I'm sure, going to a water source down that hill. Lovely. Right then, so just up there, a couple of hundred yards away, got those beautiful rails that I've just been showing you, the standard gauge and the narrow gauge. And just here, got this very interesting concrete wall here, now, at this point, I can't see the actual rail, so I'm not sure which angle they're traveling out away from the colliery at, to be honest. Now, this could well be the old trap bed where I'm standing here on this footpath, or this could be it here. Now, this is quite interesting here. So I've just showed you that concrete there, a bit of a retainer. But then, this could well be, looking at this, the actual railway embankment, because it drops off here, look. So is this the railway line embankment into Lount Colliery? I think it could well be. Because um, just here, look. So you've got a wall there. Got a wall there. And then you've got one here as well. So this, you know, where are the rails in between here? Really not sure. I'm a bit bamboozled with this one. Because there is a bit of a ground drop off here. Ah, right then. So... So if you look at this, looks a bit railway embankment-ish, don't it? Then you've got this concrete retainer here, but then, looks to me, I mean, I wouldn't have thought a train line would have ran on top of there. It might well have, it might well have, not sure. Now what's interesting, the Newbold Tunnel is a few hundred yards away from here. And yes, we are going to go and have a look at that again today because this railway line, whether that's it or I'm standing on it here, went through that tunnel at Newbold. Now, we've been to that tunnel before. The tunnel was built, I think, in 1833, designed, of course, by the great Robert Stevenson, George Stevenson's son. And I think they used it as a tramway up until the 1870s. But of course, Lount Colliery was built, at the first shaft was sunk, I think, in 1924. And of course, they needed a railway line to get the coal out. Now, what's the railway line called on the Cloud Trail that goes to Derby? Is it the Derby and Melbourne branch? Don't quote me on that. I know it ended up eventually going through the Ashby Old Parks tunnel, didn't it? But I can't quite remember now. Well, this railway, of course, the tunnel, the original railway line that was horse-drawn tramway that came out of the Newbold Tunnel, um, that, that was on the Culloughton Railway that went to the Swannington Incline, of course. Well, this intersected that at an angle, uh, branched into it, if you like, and then went through the Newbold Tunnel. And, you know, of course, the tunnel was only built as a tramway system for horses, horse-drawn tramway. So, as far as I know, it was never widened, but I'm sure steam locomotives ran through there. Now, it would have been a tight fit. Now, I might be wrong, and locomotives didn't go through the Newbold Tunnel, but I'm pretty sure they did, taking coal from this colliery 
to that uh, Derby and Melbourne branch. And if it's not the Derby and Melbourne branch, I will write below on here because I can't quite remember now, if I'm honest. But yeah, we've got to go and revisit that tunnel while we're here. We can't come down here and not go in it because it was very wet last time I came, I went down to that tunnel. Anyway, carry on. Right then, so things just got a little bit more interesting before we leave this uh, colliery site at Lount Nature Reserve. Now, I've just been chewing your ear and jibber-jabbering for the last five hours about what that retaining wall is over there, thinking maybe there was a railway on top of it, maybe the railway left on the other side, maybe it was up in the sky, maybe it was under the ground. I didn't bloody know. But I didn't know when I was over there. <laughs> you got this really good information board here. Now, just over my right shoulder, over there, just over there, there's something fascinating there that I'll show you in a minute. But we've sussed out the railway now. This here, beautiful piece of land here that's been taken over by nature as usual is the railway track bed. In that direction is the colliery, well, the once was colliery, and here is where it left the site and goes over the Melbourne Road into Newbold, Newbold and then kind of goes around a bend into the tunnel, which I promise you we'll go to in a minute. But it wasn't all about trains down here at Lount Nature Reserve, well, Lount Colliery, I'm getting them mixed up now, because what you've got here, because stuff did leave, via lorry as well look at that ain't that one of the most beautiful things you've ever seen well all right fair enough you've probably seen more beautiful things than that <laughs> because i have that is a way bridge how brilliant is that now around here somewhere there would have been the way bridge office maybe over there maybe there i don't care we've got to get to this tunnel but that ladies and gentlemen I didn't even know it was there. I've been down here numerous times. Didn't even see that before. What a prat. Let me give you a closer look before we go and look at this tunnel. Right then, so here I am, back down on the railway track bed. In that direction is the new bold tunnel. Now, last time I came down here, it was an absolute quagmire. It was absolutely chucking it down that day, if you've ever seen that video. As you can see today, it's still very boggy. But I'm starting down here at this. Now, last time I came down here, I thought this was some sort of ganger's hut or, or a couple of plate layers huts. But what it is, precisely, it used to be a way bridge, which is even more exciting, isn't it? But uh, I'll show you around this. In fact, last time I came down here, I think the roof on this one was more intact. So, it's fallen to the ground now. Lies on the track bed, of course. Hello, children. <laughs> I'm being watched. But, uh, yeah, so, this was a way bridge here. So, I'll show you around it anyway, and then we'll get to the tunnel up there. Bridge. I've just been up there, haven't I, filming that. Now, just down here, I didn't notice this last time I came down. You've got some in situ railway sleepers here. Look, ain't that good? Got another one here. So, didn't see them last time I came down here. Mind you, it was that wet. One here, look, that I'm standing on. But this is a quagmire, and it's that horrible water that stinks when you disturb it as well. So, another 100 yards or so up there. We should be at the tunnel. Right, let me fight my way through this lot. It stinks. Right then, so here we are. Back at Robert Stevenson's 1833 built Newbold Tunnel. Let's get in there and have a noser. I'm being watched by some very interested kids up there. <laughs> the camera shy. Right, without any further ado, let's get in here. Oh, it's, it stinks down here. Absolutely stinks. Right, so here we are again, and as you can hear, 
it sounds more like a culvert these days, but uh, you know, if you're saying it was built in 1833, it's in reasonable condition to be fair. And you know, I mean, this is historically very important to, to North West Leicestershire, this tunnel. And I'm amazed that these structures are allowed to go to rack and ruin, to be honest with you. Um, there's actually a house built above us here. How they ever built it, I do not know. <laughs> so this tunnel must be pretty, you know, reasonably uh, structurally sound in places. But as you can see, in pretty good condition, to be fair. In fact, it looks like a pigeon or something that's lost its uh, life down here. <laughs> Bless it. But um, yeah, you know, I mean, so historically important to North West Leicestershire. And, you know, the UK really, I mean, this is an 1833 tunnel, of course. And, you know, I didn't know until not all that long back that steam trains actually did come through here. And, you know, if you, if you look at the actual ceiling, the roof, it is black, so it has, been, it has been scarred with soot. I couldn't speak then, but yeah, absolutely amazing. And you know what, better conditions than last time I came down here. The water was nearly coming over my Wellingtons last time. Beautiful. Right then, so we are out at the other end. I'm not sure if I'm east, south, north or west here, if I'm honest with you. But as you can see up there, same as before last time I came down, that brickwork has started falling out there on the retainer wall. And I think this tunnel is actually around about 90 yards long. It's sister tunnel, a couple of miles in that direction, the Culloughton Tunnel, I think that's 480 yards long, but that's buried. But yeah, absolutely fantastic. Beautiful coping stones up the top there. What a fantastic piece of local history this is. Built in 1833. Um, its life pretty much ended, I think, in the 1870s. And then when the, uh, the Lount Colliery sunk its first shafts, converted part of the line and they actually had steam engines running through here in this direction towards me to the uh, Derby and Melbourne branch railway. I'm sure that's what it's called. I keep calling it that but if I'm wrong I'll write it down below somewhere. Okay well unfortunately that concludes today's video. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. We've seen quite a bit haven't we to be honest with you and uh, yeah when I edit this I'm probably going to end up deleting bits of it because I think it's going to be quite a long video. Anyway if you enjoyed it thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe and share and I will be seeing you at the next one. Take care of yourselves. Bye.